Hi, I'm Tanu, and today I want to talk about stage 4 endometriosis. Now, this is going to be a bit of a continuation from my previous uh, videos as well. We're concentrating on endometriosis this month because March is uh, Endometriosis Awareness Month. As you can see, the initial survey, uh, this is stage 4 endo, which had uh, bowel involved as well. And um, uh, the sigmoid and the rectum had been adhered to the back of the uterus or the uterine torus. Uh, like I mentioned in my previous video, and this is a continuation from that, only because um, I wanted to show how ICG differs with uh, robotic as well as laparoscopy. So with robotic, uh, until now, we still have to use the firefly mode, where uh, ICG then becomes a bit um, apparent. Uh, hopefully with the new uh, you know, DaVinci 5 and the other robotic um, modalities as well. Uh, I believe that they're going to bring um, ICG in soon in um, uh, their formats as well. So that's good. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. But um, the benefit, I suppose, in laparoscopy is um, you get to see ICG, you know, all the time. You don't have to press a special button for it. Um, the ones that I've used, uh, Striker, which I use quite often, uh, Carl Stoes, uh, and um, Arthrex. I think all three are pretty good. So We've gone ahead and dissected the ureter over here because, um, like I said, I don't follow, you know, set steps. Uh, whatever the pelvis offers you is what we take. And um, in this scenario, I thought that uh, it's very important to identify the ureter before I figure out where exactly I'm going to um, make my cut on the bow. So classic approach when you have bowel adhesis, uh, adhesolysis is um, you need to narrow down the adhesions right at the center. And when you do that, um, uh, you have to, I suppose, open up, uh, you know, pararectal spaces, lateralize the ureter, and then um, all that's left is your uh, bowel. You can see over here, I can see a few adhesions actually between the ovary and the bowel. So I'm trying to remove that as well. Um, and really what I want to achieve is this inverted V shape um, kind of appearance uh, with the bowel. So that means that most of it uh, is now just isolated to the uh, nodule that's connecting the rectum and the uterus. So that way an inverted V shape, I can go right on top and cut it. But uh, this um, video is a bit, uh, or this case is a bit special in that way that I'm actually not quite successful in doing that. Um, so you'll see how we, uh, you know, tackle. So what if you can't, you know, gain really good access um, to the, I suppose, pararectal spaces is always accessible. But uh, further down when you go and you can't gain access to the rectal vaginal space, what do you do? So this, this is a video that's going to explain that. We have opened up the ureter on the right side as well. And really what I want to do is I want to dissect it uh, down all the way up to the ureteric tunnel. Now there's a real good reason why I do this in uh, cases of uh, endometriosis, especially stage 4, because sometimes higher up the ureter is free, but down below, especially where the uh, uterosacral ligament is, where the uterine artery <clears throat> originates and as well as um, where it joins, um, you know, near that ureteric tunnel, okay, that's, that's where uh, at times there can be a parametrium encasing this ureter. But, um, you can see we've dissected it all the way up. It looks pretty free. Uh, it doesn't look like it's um, encased in any nodule, so I'm happy with that. Uh, the reason why I'm raising this point is you will see again later along the video, and I'll show a small snippet of it uh, at the end as well, uh, what happens to the um, opposite side of the ureter where it's actually a bit... Uh, you know, encompassed with the uh, nodule. So uh, opening it up a bit higher up in the pelvis as well, um, such that we have a really good view. We know that it's freed up. And this way, we're just going to lateralize it um, so that I know that um, my spaces are cleared and uh, safe. I'm, um, I suppose, uh, a bit conservative with the bowel um, uh, endometriosis. Uh, I really don't know what the right uh, answer is. Uh, in this case, towards the end, we actually ended up um, shaving the entire uh, nodule. Um, I, I, we have done, you know, both. Uh, we've done, uh, I suppose, uh, segmental dissection, a disc, as well as um, the uh, shavings. And over time, um, I've, I've begun to believe that um, shaving may be the best way forward. I do believe that this uh, endometriosis is an anterior disease of the posterior compartment. Whenever you see it, you will see that the um, uh, disease always encompasses, you know, anteriorly and laterally. Very rarely you find like circumferential. For sure, we have seen, um, you know, 
um, obstruction. And uh, I think three or four years ago, a patient came in with complete obstruction. It actually went to the colorectal guys first, where they did a diversion colostomy. But later on, we got involved when the um, you know, colonoscopy biopsy showed endometriosis and the imaging was indicated of a first stage for endo. And uh, yeah, that was a tiring case. But um, all said and done, uh, Usually, um, you know, and, and even with obstruction, I feel it's mainly from the anterior and then it, you know, um, goes in, occludes it completely. So usually uh, I, I'm able to get away with shavings, even with long lens of uh, involvement of uh, um, rectum or sigmoid but uh, the jury is still out look I know a lot of people are doing great work out there and um, some are a bit more aggressive than others and I think we're, we're just waiting um, to see the outcomes um, I know few people uh, have already published the outcomes and um, I think within a span of eight to ten years we'll have a really good um, idea as to you know what is the best approach um, with all these I, I do not believe that um, uh, cut off of three centimeters and um, you know more than three less than three I, I, I think um, shaving is doable in most um, uh, nodules uh, as, as is um, you know segmental. Um, so we've opened up the pararectal space in the uh, right side and what we're trying to do is uh, again lateralize all of that. I really really want to try to get into the uh, rectal vaginal space. This is my desperate attempt right. I want to open up open up the pararectal space go right down hit the pelvic floor and from there uh, I want to converge in the center trying to uh, separate the rectum uh, of the vagina because I know deep down uh, there is no nodule right. So we're trying to go beneath the nodule. You can see that you can see over here three to four centimeters of uh, length of bowel you know just stuck from top of the uh, mid uterus to all the way up to the vagina um, the uh, this lady was consented for a hysterectomy as well and I can see that the uh, ovary is actually impeding my view so what I'm going to do is just take it up okay so I'm going to cut the uh, ovarian ligament I'm going to cut the tube and then that will help me to flip that pedicle off um, freeing up my assistant so she do doesn't have to constantly lift the ovary up in case of fertility sparing you can easily take a hitch or you can use that t-shaped device which goes through the ovary and hitches it up to the abdominal wall um, once this is done, um, you will see how we are trying to actually, uh, you know, gain access to the rectal vagina space. And in this case, it, it was a bit difficult. Um, you will see me struggling both on the right, both on the left. And uh, when such a scenario arises, and that's why we've, um, you know, made this video as well. When such a scenario arises, um, we, we, I'll show you what we need to do. Okay. So um, with the ICG, you see the cognitive load is reduced. I don't have to worry. Hey, where's the ureter? Where's the ureter? Do I have to, you know, check for vermiculation? Is this the ureter or not? Um, I know it's lit green. Okay. There's nothing else uh, green in the pelvis. Okay. So uh, even when I'm doing, you know, important steps like this, I know that the ureter is far away. So we can um, cut a bit more far faster, a bit more easily and uh, more importantly, um, you know how we have a working memory for surgeons. Okay, so you have like this uh, uh, acute, um, you know, space of um, uh, working memory that you use when you're doing active surgeries, uh, which which you want to reduce the load. Okay, it's like a CPU, right? You don't want multiple applications running at the same time. Um, you, you want one or two main applications running. So here I just want to concentrate on dissection and uh, making sure that um, my margins are clear. So I will do what I get uh, to make things safe, A, for the patient, of course, but also for the surgeon, um, just reduces the load that I have to, you know, worry about. So um, that side is done. Look, I had no progress over there. So then it comes down to this. Just bite the bullet and start off centrally. Okay, this is what you have to do. You try pararectal spaces, try to get in rectal vaginal, no luck, that's fine. Okay, just, just go ahead, bite the bullet, go on head on, okay, because uh, this is what it's meant to be. Uh, now, these steps um, are a bit uh, crucial. I know that uh, with preoperative MRI and even when I see over here as well, okay, whether the MRI tells me or not, I can see that there's a nodule over here. Uh, how? Uh, a, visual cues. I can see that the texture is a bit different, but also um, haptic feedback. I know I'm cutting through uh, concrete like material over here. Um, so, so this helps. Um, there are different ways to cut the nodule. You can either cut through the nodule, which is what I'm doing with the first nodule over here. You can uh, either leave most of the nodule on the uterus or you can leave most of the nodule on the rectum. So there are different ways, whatever works for you. Over here, I'm trying to cut through the nodule uh, because it's quite massive um, and I don't want to, you know, uh, risk injury. 
uh, which is why we're doing that. You can see, the, um, you know, how peritonization over here, okay? So the back of the uterus and the rectum have walled off, okay? Forming a bit of um, structures that are um, not, not normal. So we're trying to normalize the anatomy. Uh, and, and the one thing that really has helped me is, you know, seeing videos or doing cases um, because that then sets in your brain. What is the color of the uterine serosa? Everything is pink. I get it in the pelvis, but you know, there are different shades of pink that you need to uh, start to memorize as well. The uterine serosa is of a different pink. The rectal serosa is of a different pink. So get that in your brain. See lots of videos, um, you know, do lots of cases, um, attend lots of lists. And, and this is how you can build up that memory for yourself. So that nodule is out. Okay. So you can see that nodule is out, uh, but, but, um, uh, there's no give usually what happens once you're through uh, one particular nodule then it just opens up easily but not in this case um, like I mentioned earlier three to four centimeters of bowel just uh, you know plastered to the back of the uterus so uh, I'm not giving up I still want to find that rectovaginal space I'm like I can do this you know trying really hard you know how can I just get behind the rectum but no okay you will see that uh, really I am not able to do this a really good um, uh, you know, action by my assistant over here. You can see that she's pulled the rectum back, okay? So that then narrows. Remember how I spoke earlier about this inverted V? This looks like that inverted V over here, okay? So that then narrows that, um, um, you know, rectal uh, point for me, helping me in my mind side to kind of uh, figure out where exactly I need to make that cut. Over here, um, uh, again, trying to, I suppose, lateralize whatever structures are stuck so that we just isolate only the rectal nodule. Um, and, and we know everything gets attracted. Everything forms, um, you know, a nice nodule together. Okay, so the ovaries pull. There's one nodule over there. Okay, I'm cutting it through and just separating it out. Uh, at times, it can be bilateral. We call that kissing ovaries. But uh, over here, it was just the left side. So um, over here, you can see uh, I'm, I'm a bit hesitant. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure, okay, uh, where the uterine serosa ends and where the rectal uh, serosa begins. Um, this is when you start remembering your forefathers, you know, the universe and uh, who you believe in the higher power and you pray and you take some bold cuts, okay. So the first nodule, I, I was confident. I was like, yeah, this is fine. You know, this is my territory. I know this. But over here, this nodule is not that well formed. It is not as gritty as the you know previous nodule but you, you just go through okay um, you, you make calculated um, uh, you know risk assessment and um, try to take those cuts a bit closer to uh, the uterus that's what I've done over here okay I'm a bit closer to the uterus because I really want to avoid uh, injury to the um, rectum so over here instead of cutting through the nodule I'm a bit closer you see how I'm hugging the uterus and then making that cut I, I really want to skim off that uterus okay so there is some uh, respite over here, okay? When I saw this, I was like, okay, thank you, okay? Whoever it is, thank you so much because uh, I can see a bit of, uh, you know, pad of fat on the right side, okay? So I know that now the rectum is uh, attached only by a thin um, a kind of um, uh, adhesion or a fibrotic band. So that's what it is, going a bit more closer to the uterus and trying to uh, get that away. Uh, there are just now, you know, two or three more cuts remaining after which the rectum will be completely free. So uh, there we have it, um, um, more more positive signs coming up. When you see fat, we're very, very happy. I know I'm getting now into that rectovaginal space, which I so desperately wanted to get into earlier. But, but finally, this hard work has paid off and there you have it, okay? It's, it's almost there. I think there's just one small um, strand you can see right at the center and we're just gonna take down. And now don't stop over here, okay? Try to reflect it, okay? You can see the vagina now, okay, right at the back. So try to reflect it as much as possible because I want to get a good two to three centimeter margin right uh, from the future colpotomy cup above uh, and the um, rectum and the vagina below because when I take my stitches I want to make sure that the rectum doesn't creep up and this is one sure way to avoid rectovaginal fistulas just reflect that rectum you know by one to two centimeters in stage four endos especially okay so that you don't include that when you take really good bites of your vagina so you can see over here a lot of vaginal length you and the rectum is completely pushed up. I'm happy with this. And um, like I promised, I'm just going to quickly show you the um, ureter 
over here as well so we dissected initially you yourself saw it you know the ureter was all free and nice but if you dissect it a bit more you'll actually see that uh, it's encompassed okay so this is where the um, uh, ureter tunnel is where the uterine artery runs over and um, uh, causing a bit of uh, parametrial involvement uh, I, I try to I suppose uh, avoid energy when I can and that's what I'm trying over here can I just somehow lateralize it without using a lot of energy but look this is stuck okay this is like I mentioned a concrete nodule very hard to get through so you have to use energy okay so what I'm going to do is um, you saw that flip uh, of that harmonic I'm trying to keep the vibrating jaw of the harmonic away from the ureter because I want to avoid um, avascular injury or uh, inadvertent um, uh, thermal damage okay causing it so uh, trying to just um, make that cut trying to see if I can free up but uh, again no respite so I'm going to go a bit higher okay so I'm going to thin down this nodule I still have to cut that it's still not complete but I'm going to bit, uh, going to go a bit higher thin down that nodule uh, lift up how much ever I can above and push it on the uterus so that I can take all of that in total when I do the hysterectomy and then come back to the um, you know ureteric tunnel and try to free up the roof so that's what we're doing over here this helps me with um, taking down my uterine as well uh, uterine is a bit higher up but doing this uh, increases the distance between the uh, ureter and the uterine artery so that's kind of imp uh, important as well that's why we lateralize because you really want to increase that distance okay so we have done that okay so that's taken out and now i come to the roof of the ureteric tunnel i really want to free it up because i know sometimes if left alone um, endogenously you know they have their own hormones that are being produced they can um, uh, proliferate and then encompass this ureter thus causing a bit of hydronephrosis and hydroureter in the future so uh, we really want to open this up excise that nodule like i mentioned um, you know anterior uh, involvement in the posterior compartment uh, that's what I usually find ureter on the roof of the ureter and the lateral aspects are usually involved so we try to free all of that up posteriorly I've often found that they're usually free okay and you will see that over here as well so uh, gently use your dissecting tips um, don't use a lot of energy if you're using energy you know lift it away okay lift it away from the pelvis uh, and that way it increases the distance between your um, uh, working instrument uh, and the ureter. So uh, there you have it. We've almost freed it completely. There's always an artery that comes up over here. So we just have to be mindful. And uh, once that's done, you can actually see the uterine artery just behind it. Uh, we take this nodule and it's taken off. Thank you for your patient watching. I'll be back with more.